the Women's World Open is just one of a number of leading events to visit a revitalised Belfast. And coming into the city, the world rankings confirmed Malaysian Nicole David at number one, followed by Holland's Vanessa Atkinson and Australian sisters Rachel and Natalie Grinham. Before we see some semi-final action, let's take a look at the quarter-final results. Following Natalie Grinham's victory over England's Tanya Bailey, Nicole David, looking in fine form, defeated Egypt's Omnia Kawi, 10-8, 9-2, 9-4 in 36 minutes. Rachel Grinham, determined to catch Nicole at number one spot, beat England's Laura Jane Langthorne, 9-2, 9-3, 9-6 in 34 minutes. Laura, well satisfied with her World Open. You know, Laura's obviously um, playing really well at the moment. You know, she's uh, in the last month or so, she's, she's had match balls against both me and Vanessa, so that's top four players. She's also beaten Vicky uh, Botchard, I think, a week or two ago. So, um, you know, she's, she's playing really well. And, uh, you know, for me to have a win like that, you know, I didn't come too close to losing any of those games. So, so I'm really happy with that. And much to the disappointment of the home crowd, Natalie Granger, the re-emergent American, turned the rankings on its head to claim victory over Belfast Madeline Perry. 9-2, 9-4, 9-5 in 32 minutes. Beating Vanessa yesterday was a massive boost to my confidence. And she came here, she was in, looking really good when she arrived. So, you know, to beat her when she's looking good and playing quite well, I was, I was really chuffed. And then obviously today, it was exciting to play Madeline in front of a huge local crowd. And um, I really got up for that. It, it felt terrific. She's world number seven. And to get her off in three games, I was very pleased. I felt like um, four or six in the second that I was beginning possibly to work my way into it. But I just couldn't sustain it for long enough. And then she got a few quick points and won that game. And then sort of made even in, I mean, I still had to keep sort of believing I could win it. I didn't want to give up in front of my home crowd. So, but it was pretty tough out there. We join the first semi-final of the Women's World Open. Natalie Grinham and versus Natalie Granger. We join it at two games to love. Uh, the first games going 9-4, 10-8 in favour of the Australian in the red top. And alongside me in the commentary box, I have Jenny Tramfield, who uh, has played both of these players in her playing career, a notable career, including a top 10 in the world ranking. So what do you make of this then, Jenny, so far? Well, uh, Natalie Grinham's a formidable, formidable opponent. Um, her speed around the court is absolutely tremendous. And we've seen in the first two games of this match uh, that she's actually been very patient. And um, we're just starting to see her move the ball about. What she can't afford to do is that. Natalie Granger is absolutely awesome on the volley. So Natalie Granger's really got to hold the tee and try and put some pace on the ball and pin Natalie Grinham in the back of the court. Clearly the, the second game was pivotal, Jenny. It uh, probably is going to mark a turning point in this match because at eight all, it uh, rather diminishes the chances of Natalie Granger having to come back now from two games to love down. It would have been much better for her had she been able to equalise. Absolutely, Ian. And she had uh, two or three game balls, I think, in the last game. Um, so that'll be with her now mentally as well. well. That was a beautiful drop shot on the volley. Looked a touch generous, I thought, Jenny. I think Natalie Grinham was uh, very lucky there to get a let. Clearly Natalie Granger arguing the case. It 
we can clearly see from that angle Natalie Granger is such a strong player fantastic striker of the ball another lovely touch into the backhand front corner the thing is you can just see the speed that Natalie Grinham has around the court because although it was an inch perfect drop shot Grinham was so close to getting it back yes we can see that it's really a battle of strength and skill versus speed here Ian I think the other advantage that Natalie uh, Grinham has got is that she won three Commonwealth gold medals this year, earlier on this year. So she knows that she, she, she is one of the best players in the world, or the best player, on, her, on any given day. So, whereas Natalie Granger is actually currently ranked 14 in the world, uh, and although she's a former world number one, this year has not shown this is the best form that she's shown all year, making the, the semi-final of the World Open. Of course, on her way to the semi-final, Natalie Granger took out the world number two, Vanessa Atkinson, seeded two for this event. And that will have given her some confidence. Absolutely. I mean, that was a great result for Natalie Granger probably the best win that she's had this year of course 14 in the world is very low for somebody of this caliber but she's just making one or two mistakes now and the speed around the court of Grinham is obviously going to be quite intimidating as this match progresses she's done a lot of physical work recently under her new fitness coach Alistair McCaw the Amsterdam based South African yeah it's amazing how when somebody keeps getting the ball back how it affects how it can affect an opponent mentally I think we've seen like you say Natalie Granger's made a few unforced errors because she's actually going just a little closer to the line to try and make sure that Natalie Grinham doesn't get there and in doing so has made, made a few silly errors. Of course, really the way to deal with that is to make sure you take it deep, very deep first, and require your opponent to cover the full length of the court when you take it in short. That's a lovely touch, and we've got a great view of it, clinging to the side wall on the backhand. The other thing to bear in mind is that Natalie Granger has had a very troubled couple of years with injury of one sort or another. Is she getting back to something like a full fitness, Jenny? I think so, yes. Having spoken to her, Ian, I know that she's just managed to do an eight-week block of training with, with uh, no problems. And so I think this, this is the fittest that she's feeling or has felt for the last couple of years. She's winning a significant number of rallies in that backhand front corner. Can she create some more opportunities to get the ball in there? It's so crucial that she takes Grinham to the back of the court first. The rally before we saw exactly how she created the space to go short. 
And then that last one we saw her drop shorter. And provide an opportunity for Grinham to attack. He's got such powerful drives as well. Hits the ball beautifully. She really needs to do that. She really needs to keep hitting through the ball, like you're saying, and keep Natalie and Grinham in the back of the court before she even attempts to go short. So 4-5, two love to Natalie Grinham. And Natalie Granger is really going to have to make a move, try and get a lead. Steal this third game if she's to make any headway. So, with that decision, it's five all. <laughs> what a fantastic shot! Again, backhand front corner, that's where she needs to keep putting them. And she meant that. Flew off the front wall into the side wall, Nick. Just died. Oh. There's another one. Perhaps that decision has just fired her up a little more. Clearly didn't approve of it. Straight onto the volley. Not much consistency. And one or two good rallies, followed by a loose one. And another unforced error. All she really needed to do with that was hit the forearm front corner. Crucial point as well there, Ian, to take it to six all. It's half court again. Yeah, I mean, she's really, Natalie Granger really needs to hit through the ball with some venom like we know she can, but not to leave it halfway up. It has to go all the way to the back. That's a much better length. Immediately gives her the opportunity. And with that... Gives Natalie Grinham a first game ball, looking at a place in the final. Great rally. <laughs> well, Natalie Grange is prepared to fight to the end. A really good rally. With fast pace. Moving the ball around the court. But a let ball and it's still match ball for the young Australian. It's a shame we couldn't have seen a few more of those rallies earlier on in the match, Ian. I'm sure Natalie Grinham is feeling worse after that than Natalie Granger. Oh dear. And with that, forehand volley into the tin. Natalie Grinham takes her place in the final by a 3-0 margin, 9-4, 10-8, 9-6.
you know, I felt like I was in control in certain parts of the match, but then sort of let it slide and let it slip a little bit. And she did a very good job of keeping herself under control, and she didn't make many many errors. So disappointed, um, but some good stuff to work on and and take home and uh, you know put into practice later on. So the second semi-final, Nicole David of Malaysia, the number one seed, against Rachel Grinham, the number three seed from Australia. And we join the match uh, with Nicole David, the number one seed, having a two games to love lead. 9-7, 9-1, the first two games. And in the early stages of this third game, it's crucial now that Rachel Grinham gets a good start at the beginning of this third game if she's to make any impact in this semi-final. So I think we can identify the players by the fact that Nicole David has the white skirt on. Rachel Grinham's in black. We've seen these two play a few matches of late, Jenny. We certainly have, Ian, and what's been interesting today was I, I would have expected uh, a closer match given the fact that last their last encounter in Hong Kong was a close 3-2 to Nicole. I really thought that Rachel was making some headway into the world, world number one. Um, but the first two games today have been disappointing, Ian. Nicole has totally ruled this match. And she, she's on there and she's defending her title and she looks like she, she means it. And really, Rachel's going to have to produce something pretty spectacular, I think, to, uh, to move Nicole from, uh, from her crown. I think we've had a few discussions now about what Rachel needs to do, but in tactical terms, but doesn't seem today like it's quite happening for her. Again, Nicole's speed of movement around the court is incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised that Rachel's questioning that pickup because it's remarkable that she actually got there, but I think she did genuinely get it up. What do you think, Ian? I think she, she quite clearly got it up as far as I can see, but the, the one thing that strikes me about that, Jenny, is that actually it was a shot that was very telegraphed. It wasn't that difficult, therefore, to set off early, uh, anticipating roughly where the ball was going to go. So... That allied to Nicole's speed, make it a, made it a fairly straightforward pickup. I would still like to see Rachel <coughs> driving the ball deep before she takes the ball in short making sure that she finds the back corners. I just think that she's too happy with that short half-paced length, that lob, which I don't think po poses Nicole any problems at all. I just wonder to what extent Rachel gets affected by Natalie, her sister, playing before her. So, I mean, I, I guess, you know, it's impossible for her not to get emotionally wrapped up in Natalie's match and then to have to come on court and perform herself. It must be quite difficult. I would agree with that, Jenny. The other aspect to that is that you would think that as sisters, <laughs> that they could almost set it up for each one of them to be benefiting from a, a really tough semi-final from the other against Nicole David in other words to say that if Rachel can get Nicole to five today then if Natalie is in the final um, 
and the harder Rachel can make it for Nicole today, the more affected that that might leave the chances for, for Natalie tomorrow. Almost working as a team, it doesn't seem to be quite like that. No, I mean Rachel looks very flat to me today. So last time we saw her, she was she just looked so up for it. But today again, don't know why. But that's a lot better. She looked as though she really meant that. There's, there's more real penetration in her drives. She looked to be much more positive in the way she attacked. The athleticism of these two players is fantastic for women's squash. How many rallies do you think you'd last, Ian? With Nicole David? I've retired, James. I <laughs> wouldn't be planning on lasting any at this <laughs> stage. So. Happy to stand at the back and talk about it. <laughs> so, love three. Rachel Grinham serving after that really positive rally. And the break to change the racket. the ball terribly carefully Rachel if, I, if I'm seeing this right because she's been wrong footed by two fairly ordinary shots across the court sometimes it can be difficult on these glass courts but I haven't uh, noticed any of the players although Nicole looks like she she uh, missed she missed the ball lost the ball in the air there phase of this match Rachel really needs to make some inroads and score some points if she's got to have any chance in this semi-final at all spoke with uh, Liz Irving earlier who's uh, Nicole's coach and again, she just reinforced what, what an absolute pleasure it is for her to work with a player like Nicole. She, she was telling me that Nicole, even though she's world champion, world number one, she's still like a sponge and she still wants to learn. She's so very professional. Works really hard. Fantastic shot. So, 5 1, and it really is beginning to look a hopeless task for Rachel. Losing the second game 9 1. She was making every effort to try and back off the ball, and she couldn't do so because of you. Yes, Liz. Well, all the discussion in the world, but it made no difference. That was awarded originally, and so it is. Looks like it's uh, livened up a little bit anyway. Well, she did it all right. Took Nicole right into the back corner and then missed the drop shot. 
six one. And this would be Nicole David's thirty second unbeaten match in this little run. Assuming that she wins this game. Grinham special straight down the middle. Trying to catch and again trying to catch Nicole out. Well, could be said it worked. Yep. Reward for surprise element. One six. One six. Is this Rachel Grinham's last chance? Great drop shot that was. You just saw Nicole David pause at the top of the bounce and then with great skill got it really low in the front. That's loose. Loose again. And ultimately two fine drives. Clinch that point for Nicole David. just clip the edge of the line and that takes Nicole David to 8-1 match ball and for a place in the final and that's it Nicole David meets Natalie Grinham in the final of the Women's World Open with a 3-0 win over Rachel Grinham 9-7, 9-1, 9-1 So the final of the Women's World Open Squash Championship and we're here in the Ulster Hall in Belfast, Ireland. On court we have the number one seed Nicole David from Malaysia looking to extend her unbeaten run from 32 matches to 33 on the Whisper Tour and her opponent today, the younger of the Grinham sisters, Natalie Grinham from Australia. In actual fact, she's from Toowoomba. And she's the number fourth seed, so be one or two upsets in the bottom half of the draw. But this is a, a really exciting prospect. There we see the Commonwealth Games gold medal individual holder. And this first few rallies are setting off at a frantic pace. Alongside me in the commentary box, I have Jenny Tramfield your feeling today about this match Jenny I'm really interested in uh, to see how it pans out in both these players have got exceptional speed around the court um, I'll be interested to see what tactics each of them employ against the other one given the fact that both players can get almost anything back are we in for a long, hard match? Will most of the points be played out in the back of the court, I wonder, Ian? It's really interesting. I think what's impressed me immediately is the real determination in Natalie Grinham. Contrast starkly with her sister's approach, where she tends to favour a lot of lobs. Natalie is driving hard and relentlessly to the back and I think it's probably 
It'll be quite effective. Just miscued that angle. But generally speaking, she would appear to be making a lot of the pace at the moment. Drives down that backhand wing. And good work by Natalie Grinham, forcing the ball to be hit just out of court. Shoot, Natalie Grinham was lucky to get away with that. Loose ball into the middle of the court and just jutted out at Nicole. She couldn't do anything with it. Well, I think the interesting thing about that was that uh, Nicole didn't really look as though she wanted to move her feet to make room. And although it came late at her, she might have been able to do a bit more than she did. Looks slightly careless to me. I think she might actually be a little bit nervous. They're both just battering away at the ball here. Ian. Yeah, but uh, I haven't really seen Nicole had to have to play against this sort of onslaught. And it's going to be interesting to see how the match develops with that in mind. I know she's a great athlete, but to my mind, it'll be interesting when somebody really does take the attack to her it's a, a rushed shot probably backs up what you were saying about her being a little nervous at this stage of the match yeah just snatching at the odd ball like that one those are good drives I must admit, at this point, Natalie Grinham does look like the more experienced player. She looks like she knows what she's doing. She's taking the attack to Nicole, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Good decision. She looks really positive. She's really going for this, and to my mind, not too many players have he set out to attack the world number one in quite this way a few players who are probably capable of doing it certainly Natalie Grinham's one oh, what a great shot there Pick onto the ball, really fizzing at the moment. I think Nicole Davis must be wondering what, what's hit her. <laughs> Five love down. Indeed. Turn away from the volley and pick it out of the back corner. Again, another snatched volley into the tin. Although Nicole is particularly quick around the court, it does look as though Natalie's getting to her a little bit. She does seem to be rushed. She's timing the ball quite as well as she might. It's 
Let's chip in a couple of volleys. Let's loose one into the front. I think mentally as well we're seeing a different game here because Natalie Grinham has already had a big win against Nicole in the Commonwealth Games. She's stolen that title from her. Nobody else on the tour has actually taken Nicole on and won at any stage in, in, a, big, in a big event this year. So no wonder Nicole's looking a, a little nervous and Natalie's looking quite confident. Front. Can't play from behind like that because Nicole is good. She has the mid court and drives relentlessly to the back. That's what she's not been allowed to do so far in this game. And Natalie, who's stolen the middle. early on to that one. I'm wondering how long Nasty Grinham can keep playing at this pace. She knows that she's got to to get anywhere against Nicole. Oh, oh incredible rally. Well, she was forced to do an awful lot of work there, Natalie. She did it willingly and at great speed. But there were one or two really severe court sprints in there. relentless so far it's interesting that Nasser Grinham even when she gets the, the opening and the opportunity to play a drop shot is choosing to go for a low hard kill instead I think that's probably not, not too bad in terms of the thinking was felt that a, a relentless driving to the back taking Nicole out of the midcourt area is going to be a good starting point Can't neglect the front of the court completely but when somebody like Nicole is so quick into the front allow her to exploit that counter attacking and it's going to be a question of who controls the middle of the court the most. He's going to finish up on the winning side here. It's been a good, solid performance from Natalie Grinham. She's making Nicole have to really work for these early points. That's severe. She's hitting the ball so well.
Costa. What a kill. So 6-1, first game. So far, Nicole David is struggling to make much of an impact. But she's playing badly. It's just that Natalie Grinham is playing better. Pressure on. Mixing it up at just the right time. That's good play from Natalie Grinham. Nicole's doing some work there. It is how little Nicole's able to volley in the middle of the court, Jenny. That's the thing that's impressing me about the attack that. Natalie Grinham's launching at the world number one. The most volley that I've seen in this rally, and it's been a lengthy rally. It certainly has. It's just an instinctive backhand. Well, timed it better. Finished up as a good kill. Certainly taking Nicole on here, and I'm just wondering in how long she's going to be able to last at this pace. Although we know that she's got a new fitness trainer. Oh, what a shot! Take that, Nicole David. And six, one. The thing is, when you're hitting the ball this well, that does actually reduce to some degree the workload physically if you can dominate from the middle you're not covering such amount of court that's a really good late disguise flick put Nicole David under huge pressure with that straight forehand that ball 7-1 Early advantages all with the Australian. There's another ferocious drive. Just catching the wall at the same time as Nicole David needed to play it. So, game ball to Natalie Grinham. He's not happy. Clearly wanted out of that rally to the chair by the side of the court. Nonetheless, 1 8. And really, Nicole will be wanting to get something of a toe hole in this match. That's not going to give her it. It's all been Natalie Grinham, although the rallies have been fiercely contested. It's Natalie Grinham that's been winning them all. This is Natalie Grinham's second world final. She lost to Vanessa Atkinson in 2005. She certainly turned up today looking as though she wants it in. front corner. Tough rally at game ball. Mm. 
There it is. Attack into the front of the court. Cole David just digging it out. counting the shots Jenny because this is a long <laughs> rally we have attack going on and there's a weak forehand from Nicole David and the first game goes to Natalie Grinham and by a very clear margin of 9-1 the second game of this really awe-inspiring final and Natalie Grinham the Commonwealth Games gold medalist from Australia with that 9-1 first game lead fires Whoa. one in she smashed that into the front <laughs> backhand corner and she seems to be really really positive and taking the ball by the horns I think she was making a statement there Ian while the ball's not as warm get the winner in quick no more 60 shot rallies it's not a bad idea so there's another error from Nicole David and looking at the conversation between games Italy will obviously have been well pleased with what happened in the first game but what about Nicole Jenny what do you think's going through her mind I think Nicole's actually going to be trying to soak this up. She knows that Natalie's come at her. But, you know, she's a tough competitor and she knows that Natalie's done a lot of work in that first game. interesting to see how she reacts now though Ian I mean you know she's three love down she's one love and three love down and the pressure from Natalie is seemingly relentless that's better Just help that into the front forehand Nick but that's what uh, Natalie Grinham's done so well so far in this match. Like you say, and she's not given her anything on the volley. As soon as you give Nicole David the volley, you, you know, you're setting yourself up to lose, really. Significantly in that rally, Natalie Grinham went for two short kills. And they both were really very high above the tin. And just beginning to wonder if the shine's coming off this ferocious attack that Natalie Grinham has been able to construct against the world number one. has to be a lessening of the intensity at some stage. The error from the world number one. Ball clinging beautifully to the side wall. In fact, with the glass court, very aware of just that extra bit of clingability, if that's the word, Jenny. Not quite the same. 
as when you're on a traditional plaster court. But, uh, no matter what, that was a great shot. Uh, stretching Nicole to make the, the volley. Yeah, they're both trying to get that tee position in the middle of the court. Is this the counter-attack, Ian? It's got to come at some point. Nicole David is far too good a player to put up with being on the receiving end of all the attack. I fear a little bit that if Natalie does lose the intensity, well, Nicole will be ready there waiting. It's well taken on the volley. Too many going on the volley now. Yeah. It's too high again. Well, oh, that's well volleyed. This is where Nicole's so good, you know. Natalie's put a game and a half in at a hell of a pace, and now Nicole's sensing it's her turn to move forward and to dominate. noticeable that in the first game Nicole was able to volley very little now she's volleying an awful lot more and in doing so is forcing Natalie Grinham deeper in the court and it's that little bit more difficult to make the telling shots from there Oh, that's well volleyed again. In quick. That's tight. It's amazing, though, Ian, that Nicole's gone from been one love and three love down and now she's from nowhere she's four three up well tactically we've seen just how she's been able to do that question is what can Natalie do to get back into the driving seat in the drives from Natalie Grinham. Now I'd have to agree with you Ian. I think she's hit, when she hits hard it's going half court now rather than all the way to the back. And so to get it to the back she's hitting higher and then allowing Nicole the volley. Again, a very lengthy rally. The error from Nicole David to four all. Still looking for that volley though, even though she made the error, she's keeping the pressure up. Well, it was a better drive, it was lower, and it made the volley more difficult. Just spotting one or two local dignitaries there in the crowd Jenny see the whisper executive director Andrew Shelley looking on with great interest big servant of the game in all these years he's been in the sport both with the governing body in England England squash as their tournament manager director and now as the the main man behind the women's tour So Jahangir Khan, 
the great world champion from Pakistan, now the president of the World Squash Federation. Clearly, those are great dignitaries from the world of squash, mingling with the local dignitaries here in Belfast. Just seeing her slow down a little bit there, just in terms of where she takes the ball. She let it drop instead of taking it early. It was an interesting and very quick summary what she thought from Natalie Grinham. Two words of importance, time and space. Got the let rather than the point against her. So mentally strong, Nicole David, Jenny. What's your take on that side of the match? Absolutely, and I mean, she's just soaked up the onslaught from Natalie Grinham at the beginning of this match. You know, she looked a little bit nervous, but she settled down. And she just, she's, she's, oh, she's, seems so certain as to what she's doing here. No panicking, just keep playing and working really hard in every rally. Difficult shot, backhand, the racket going away from her body position. As a result, just caught the top of the tin. These are some terrific drives. Natalie Grinham has just tightened up her driving. She's hitting the ball lower. And there's less on the volley again. So maybe that was just a brief patch when she, she became a little ragged. But long footed there by the boast from Nicole David. It was a clever choice of shot there from Nicole. Sensing that it had a long rally up and down the walls and then just chucking in the boast. Nice piece of variation. shot. I can't believe Nicole got that back. Nicole has really defended this well. She's been under the cosh. Rally goes on. It's full of variations. Attack. Desperate defence. This is uh, turning out to be a very, very good match. Fair share of attacking. Such a punishing rally in. So 
and it goes on. I can't believe they're still in the same rally. Well, that's a wonderful rally, and rightly given a rapturous round of applause by the crowd here in the Ulster Hall in Belfast. Well, at other, at other sports, such as badminton or tennis, they'd be allowed a rest after a rally that length and be in. Well, and Natalie backs it up with a beautiful volley into the front forehand, but it looked like a rather tired reply from Nicole David. I mean, this just demonstrates the punishing nature of the game of squash. I mean, both players there. What do you think their heart rate would have got up to in a rally like that, Ian? Off the scale, I would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> Mine didn't. I'm just sitting here watching it. <laughs> well, that's a couple of weaker rallies from Nicole David. Good order has been restored. God, neither player is giving it an inch. This is really terrific stuff. This is as good a game of squash as I've seen on the women's tour for a very long time. I hope that's not Matthew Grinham slowing down. Six, seven. Of course, Natalie really will be desperate to try and get this two-game lead if she possibly can. It would be a huge psychological advantage. Put the world number one under terrific pressure. That's a fantastic choice of shot again. Really clever playing it at that stage. Ferocious drive that was. Natalie Grinham at full stretch, but to no avail. So this gives Nicole David a game ball to bring the score back on level terms. I'm just sensing that Nicole's starting to win the mental battle. Natalie Grinham's given it absolutely everything and Nicole's still just edging ahead in this game. Where she was nervous early on, she definitely isn't nervous now. Well, that penalty stroke gives Nicole David the second game by 9-7 and what a terrific game it was. Well, one game all and we're ready for the third game in this absorbing contest, this final of the Women's World Open. And Natalie Grinham took the first game very comfortably, really, mounting a ferocious attack by nine points to one. And after a very tight struggle in the second, Nicole David just stole the second game by nine seven. So here we are at the start of the third. Now, Jenny, what's going to happen? Well, I think an important thing, Ian, is that although Natalie won the first game 9-1 or 9-2, she did a hell of a lot of work. And I think at the end of uh, the second game, she just started to fade a little bit and Nicole took advantage of that. And it'll be interesting now to see how much more she's got in the tank because the way that she's going to win this match is the way that she played in that first game, which requires a significant amount of energy uh, to hit through the ball and really keep Nicole off that tee, pin her in the back corners. Be interested to see how much she's got left. There doesn't seem to be any lessening of the pace at the start of this third game. In fact, anything it's more of the same yeah I think she's had a good talking to actually 
in between games. I think probably Tommy Bird and her husband is also a PSA player. He's probably given her some encouragement. And reinforce the fact that if she wants to win, that's what she's got to do. So she's got to find it from somewhere. So good to see is the really ferocious driving, really deep balls into the back corners. So Ian, with your coaching hat on, if you if you were coaching a player to play and to beat Nicole David, what would you be telling them? As far as uh, the tactics are concerned, I think Natalie Grinham's got them pretty right. You could argue that a, a little variation of pace might help just to upset the rhythm of things a bit, but. Uh, the important thing is to keep it out of the middle of the court and away from the volley and force Nicole into the back corners and I think Natalie has done that particularly well and if I was Rachel Grinham I would be taking a lot of notice of what's going on here although I have to say that it's arguable whether this is sustainable at the physical level but that was a classic rally Natalie Grinham forced the opening in the front of the court and drew Nicole David forward and then was able to hit the ball into the empty space. I mean, the thing that amazes me about both these two players is just that they look so comfortable with this pace of play, which is phenomenal. You know, I think if I was on there at the moment, Ian, I'd be sweating profusely. <laughs> Neither player looks to be too disturbed by this level of work. As you know, Jenny, it's, it's what these players train for, what they prepare for. If you want to win the world titles, that's what it's all about. And, but there clearly is terrific pace about this game. There's a lot of attacking squash. There's nothing negative, neither player is taking a backward step and this is just a great credit to the women's game. And to my mind, if these two can create a rivalry and have the challenges coming in from the likes of Rachel Grinham and Vanessa Atkinson, Natalie Granger and Tanya Bailey, then the women's game is going to be very healthy for some considerable time. I mean, I, I just think that these these two players have taken the physical nature of the women's game to a new level. They've certainly raised the bar. I mean, to be able to uh, to play at this pace, have this these long rallies, and to not even appear to be breathing heavily, is just remarkable. Speaking from someone who's trained very hard full time you know I mean the, the natural gifts that both these two players have got in terms of athleticism is just phenomenal I have to say I do think that uh, overall again Natalie Grinham seems to be controlling this third game not unlike the way she did the first Quite a lot of work there, and in the end, just made a, an error on the boast. Slightly fortuitous, put the side wall first, which I don't think was what Natalie had in mind. Nonetheless, she's opened a big gap, five love, at the start of this third game. She's been good value for that as well.
Just throwing in the odd boat now to break it up. It's a lovely touch. It's a half court ball. And she saw it in range and just gently touched it into the front corner. Ken Nicole David must wonder what's happened. Six love down. Retrieving speed around the court. It's a lovely low shot from Nicole. Forces the error. There's a sustained build-up of pressure here on Nicole David. She's having to do a lot of work. She's not getting to the middle of the court, and as a result, she's just now. Chancing her arm with one or two shots she wouldn't normally take on. period of error free squash together it's a shame really it's an easy point see what sort of toll that sustained pressure has taken on Natalie Grinham. Just a little bit looser there on the drop shot. It's speculative, yep. Just wonder whether she's got enough in the tank just to get this game over with and get off off court and have a bit of a breather. to the court. Yeah. Nicole David was threatening to drive it and just turned it at the last minute around the angle. Three drop shots in a row from Nasa Grinham which we've not seen all match. I wonder if that's a, a sign of a bit of fatigue. Bit of a dubious call there Ian. Mm. a good drop shot in there early on onto it uh, early and she got down low as well what she needed to do was a let Jenny and quite sure what happened really but there didn't seem to be any contact at all what do you think I agree there's no reason why she couldn't have applied that shot It's 
shot. He's turned the ball late. I, don't, I just get the sense that actually Nicole David doesn't watch the ball quite as carefully as she might. And if you hit two or three relentless drives like Natalie has been doing, and then just a little late turn across the court, flicked as she did then. Just a little chancy catch her out a little bit. If not completely, at least she does tend to misread it. <laughs> Both players are just flat out. Fantastic stuff. Great court coverage. End to end stuff as they say in football, but equally applicable on a squash court. They say it's, it's boxing with racket. I think Natalie Grinham's been doing most of the punching this game. It's another of those long rallies. And in the end, it was a bit of a soft finish, but... Uh, Eight. Nicole has a huge deficit to make up in this game. Again, it's a bit of a soft stroke, I thought. tell that Natalie Grinham is not impressed by that decision and I, have to say, I tend to agree with her. It's a wonderful drive. Another one. A little bit of impatience creeping in. Tight. That? Oh. oh my word. Oh, what a great, great play. play. Fantastic drive. She really worked the corners there. Did Natalie Grinham and finished it off with a thrashing drive into the empty space and the backhand wall. So, 8-3, game ball for a 2-1 advantage. And a big boost this will be to the Australian. If she can nail this, and there it is. Natalie Grinham wins the third game, 9-3, and goes into a two games to one lead. Natalie Grinham with a two games to one lead. She'll be delighted. And I think she's played really well, Jenny. I've not seen her play this well all year, actually. And I mean, it's been a fantastic performance. I think she's been really clear on what she needs to do to beat Nicole. And so far, she's done it brilliantly. The question is, can she sustain it for another game? It's a shame, and I'm sure she will think this in, on reflection, it's a shame that she actually didn't quite keep it together in that second game because she's played actually well enough to have had this one by now. But that's to, not to factor in the resilience and terrific defence of the world number one, Nicole David. She's a fighter, if nothing else. Physically well organised. Quick around the court. She does all the basics extremely well. So, Natalie straight away. One love in front in this fourth game.
I wonder if that was let with a hoped for point written all over it. <laughs> I'm sure it was, Ian. <laughs> I think it was a correct decision, though. It was a tight drop by uh, Nicole, for sure. Again, I'm going to watch for the amount of volleys, clear cut volleying chances that Nicole gets in the mid court area. Oh. Such speed. <laughs> oh. He read that to perfection. It was a really good get by Natalie Grinham. But Nicole knew exactly where to be. I've got a feeling as well that we're going to see a classic Nicole response here, which is turn the volume up, run faster, try and volley more, try and take it earlier. I think the thing for me is that Natalie's got to be careful not to show her too much of the front of the court too soon. She's been very patient so far. Frustrated Nicole a lot of the time and I think really that's what we need to see. Less convinced by the lobbing. It's more Sister Rachel's domain. It's a fantastic drop again. What a good volley. She's over-egging those short ones. Oh, that's hard work for Natalie. This is even harder work. As the volley goes on, and really a fairly poor mistake. Misjudgment. But it was a very tough rally. She covered a lot of court. And that's probably the sort of rally that Nicole will look to, to put more of into the fourth game making your opponent work there's perhaps one observation about Nicole is that she does appear to have played really only very, very steady squash she hasn't really looked to exploit all of the corners in fact is she probably hasn't been allowed to but she needs to try and take more of the sting out of Natalie by working around the court if she possibly can. shot there's no way that one was coming back in no. it's significant that actually Nicole hasn't led at all in this match she's look at this <laughs> I just can't believe she got all those balls back Retrieving's just immense. Oh. Well, Nicole took a bit of a tumble. Wasn't sure whether Natalie's ball was up or not, but she wasn't taking the chance. Loose. There's no 
the one that's good. The loose one. Play. Really good play. Both players. Did she get a let there? What do you make of that decision, Ian? Well, I can sympathise with Natalie Grinham, but I suspect she's getting a little frustrated here because she's really played well and by all reasonable thinking you would have thought by now that she could well have been in the locker room with the title in her possession but unfortunately that is to reckon without the quality of Nicole David and it doesn't surprise me that she's getting a little frustrated now she's played very well <laughs> scrambling defence here and still she's putting her all into it oh, these are great skills shots into all corners of the court forcing each other to defend Always looking for a, a way to win the point. They're retrieving. What a wonderful rally. Absolutely sensational. And finished with that volley on the backhand at full stretch into an empty space. Well, matches are won and lost on rallies like that. Let's see how each of them respond. giving an inch <laughs> the wrong way and still got back oh that's unfortunate for Natalie and there's the first signs of a little tiredness I thought not quite to the ball it just faded on the shot before the ball hit the tin. This is marvellous stuff. A great game of squash. Fantastic advert for the women's game. I'm just so impressed with the way Nicole's come back in this game as well, Ian. I mean, she's really taken Natalie on and said, you know, if you want the title from me, <laughs> you, how much do you want it? You know, are you prepared to work like this? Well, not forgetting that we know the quality of Nicole David. She is really carving out a reputation looking for a place in the history of the, the game and the fact is that when somebody plays this well against you and we know her pedigree it's likely that if there's any lessening of the intensity that she will then start to come into her own and play really well now what we're seeing here is a succession of errors in the racket of Natalie Grinham and to my mind that's to some extent going to be inevitable she's attacked relentlessly since the start of this match and at some point 
You are likely to make errors. So, with the error from Nicole David, just opens the door again slightly for Natalie. 1 6. It's a big deficit. She needs to do something about it. Moving into a very interesting phase of the match. Bubbling up nicely. Oh! We all boasted, Nick. We're seeing it all here today. One. Back in the volleying seat is Nicole. Oof. Just missed it. Of course, as soon as Nicole gets back volleying, then it does open up the front of the court for her. That initial drop shot by Natalie was not well conceived, really. Where she scored the most is with the relentless driving, forcing her opponent back before she takes the ball in short. Rallying, some solid drives. Neither player prepared to give an inch. This is just relentless, Jenny. It certainly is. balls on offer here credit to them the match has been going this far and they're still really not playing oh. it's a bold gamble the one opportunity which wasn't a particularly easy opportunity Immediately followed by Nicole Error. Wrong footing drive, good footwork, good technique, everything right. She just got in so early at the end of all these long rallies. Fantastic shot. David at full stretch there. Taking a bit of a gamble. 
my mind, what she's done well here in this match is just soak up the pressure and stay alive with the, the match, but really not take too many chances. And that's when she's been at her most effective. Just wait for the Natalie Grinham storm to just blow over a little bit because she's been very quick to exploit any reduction in the intensity of the attack. I'm sure that's the right thing. Stay area free. The intensity in this match has just been amazing, Ian. I wonder how long it'll take both of both of them, whoever wins, to get over this match. Just the emotional and the physical effort that's gone in so far. Two opportunities beginning to appear on the volley for Nicole David, but she does appear to be making a bit of a mess of them. And it and it's quite possible that the relentless driving that was happening early on is not quite as deep and penetrating. And just at the moment, Nicole's maybe mistiming them slightly. <laughs> That's better. That wasn't mistimed. That was right on the racket. Stroke was beautifully executed. Even Jahangir Khan sitting in the middle of that uh, picture, looking at, approvingly at the quality of the squash. shot again she made that mistake earlier on with the ball coming across the body and having to work the racket away from the, the natural swing not easy to play at all and it was just the fact that Nicole volleyed it back so soon that created that situation a rather desperate cross-court backhand Nick and Nicole then makes a mess of it, the, the loose ball 3-7 Natalie Grinham a long way behind in this fourth game looks like we're headed for a fifth Just looked like she'd regained a bit of momentum though. That's a great shot. Looking for the cross court, Nick. Desperate defence by Natalie. Oh, that's a dreadful drop shot. Just what she needed. Pressure's back on Nicole. Although still with a cushion. Four seven. Needs to see if she can squeeze another couple of 
Good rally then. There we go, there's one. 5-7. Well. Four points more. And Natalie Grinham win. Start of the match. That's tight. That's very tight. And she wants it as well. <laughs> a big scream from Nicole David. It's in the style of pumping herself up. Forgetting that the win here for Nicole David in this match would give her a 33 match unbeaten run on the tour, which is we're all beginning to reach for record books to see how the land lies. But there's no doubt this youngster from Penang in Malaysia is an exceptional talent and she would dearly love to add this World Open title to all the other titles she's got. Measures there, Ian. That straight, was straight out, in. Isn't it? It's a good little cross court drop from the back there that Natalie Grinham plays. Oh, <laughs> what a, a shot. wonderful drop shot. Now it's Natalie Grinham's turn to shriek. Apart from the tiredness, there must be an awful lot of tension now as we're closing in in the latter stages of this particular game, but also the match. Stretch, but she just took care to control the racket head. Just touch that gently into the front. Just what she needed at that stage, Ian. Controlling the middle of the court more than ever. Well, I just got the sense that Natalie's beginning to look a little tired and with that penalty point. Nicole David moves to game ball to draw this match level and there it is so with a 9-5 scoreline in the fourth game we're in for a fifth this is just the most extraordinary squash I've seen on the women's tour for a long time Jenny so we're into the fifth and final game Nicole David has clawed her way back from two games to one down and great shot. 
that is the first time in the match that she's actually led. It's been, so far, it's been Natalie that's made all the play. So where's your money here now, Jenny? It's looking like very much like Nicole, to be honest, Ian. Unless Natalie's husband, Tommy Burden, has been able to come up with the right words of wisdom. I hinge a lot on whether the new fitness coach has been able to work wonders. Just the sort of start she would have wanted. For love. And that's not the way to start the fifth game, but I suspect that at this stage all the real momentum is with Nicole David. She's had to defend. And she's defended resolutely to get to this point. Now we're going to see what Natalie Grinham's got left in the tank. I mean, it's just been amazing that Nicole's managed to come through the onslaught that Natalie Grinham has just given her. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen Natalie Grinham play so well. And I'm sure there will be times in her life where she plays probably not nearly as well. And wins much more comfortably. Oh, great shot. Good disguise. Crafty little shot, just when she needed one. one running high here it just strikes me that there's a great deal of frustration from Natalie Grinham she really has played wonderfully well and got scant reward in terms of real lead and advantage it was a fierce drive from Nicole looks as always unruffled and ready to capitalize on those sort of errors it's just making a few errors now tired patient attack that she was putting together earlier in the match now probably mingling with the fatigue has disappeared and it's hard to see really what Natalie can do to get it back because actually Nicole's looking very resolute she, she is the Duracell bunny, there's no doubt about it. I mean, she's still hunting that ball, she's still on the tee. That's great speed by... Wonderful retrieving <laughs> by both of them. Well, what a wonderful rally. Then, it's really been typical in this match. We've seen some fantastic retrieving, we've seen some wonderful attacking, and... We really haven't seen a lot of errors, certainly not unforced errors. That was an error under the most extremes of pressure. 
And it just caught the top of the tin. Six. Oh, <laughs> oh, she was so quick onto that and just thrashed it away across the body of Natalie Grinham. Wrong a moment ago. Six two, not three six as it was. I thought Nicole David with a big advantage now looks to be moving closer to the the great prize, the world title. That was Nasty Grinham's tired legs. It's just amazing the difference. I mean, as opposed to Nicole, the runner before, who got onto the ball so early. making Nicole play from the back now anything like the amount she was earlier on and that's out of court waiting for the ball to be returned So, the ball out of court, re play match ball, first match ball for Nicole David. Watched by her parents, from the Malaysian ambassador to Ireland. Oh, wonderful retrieving. She's desperate for this title. Straight drive that's been so damaging earlier on, but not now. <laughs> and there it is, and what a wonderful drop shot to finish this match. Nicole David is the world champion, winning by a margin, a narrow margin in five sets of 1-9, 9-7, 3-9, 9-5. 9-2 I was really pleased with my game and I just hung in there and stuck to it and I won I'm so happy I can't believe it uh, again uh, it's, that's, how, that's why I was so emotional it's, in the, next, the last time I was that emotional was the world juniors like double world junior champion and this is my double world senior title so it's unreal <laughs> You know, there was nothing more I could do today. I gave it my best and, you know, I played well and she played well and uh, it was it was close all the way and, yeah, disappointed to not be on the winner's podium but still I feel like, you know, I've, I've had a great tournament so, you know, I have done well. So, Nicole David wins her second World Open and extends her unbeaten run yet further. The world rankings show some of the ups and downs of 2006. Vanessa Atkinson, so long at number two, drops one to three, with Rachel Grinham now in second. Tanya Bailey and Madeline Perry move up one, but the biggest mover is new world number seven, Natalie Granger, and who's to say she won't go higher? Belfast has been a fantastic venue for the World Open and the last of 2006. So join us again in the new year for Whisper Women's International Squash.